Good day and welcome on behalf of Fred Hebert Stiftung and the South African Civil Society Information Service. My name is Renate Tembusch and I'm the director of Friedrich Ebert Stiftung. Thank you for following our invitation to today's public debate on how does the media cover the race debate in South Africa. Special thanks must be extended to our distinguished panelists, who will be introduced by Fazida soon, for being prepared to share your thoughts on this important subject with us. This panel, public panel debate format was developed by the two partners, FAS and Sexes, in 2013. And since then, we had several debates on crucial and current issues. We evaluated the election results in 2014, unpacked the nationalization issue, debated urban land reform, and discussed different options for an inclusive economy in South Africa. However, and uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, but we have never before received such a huge response to our invitation as we have for this event. And if I look around the world, if I look around the world, globally, I mean, it's not surprising. Racism is very, in its varying forms, such as prejudice, violence, dislike, discrimination, and oppression, is unfortunately currently in the media all over the world. From the Ferguson protests in the US to Charlie Hebdo in France, and the terrible attacks on Jewish and people, uh, Jewish people in Bel France, Belgium, and in Germany, up to the anti-Islam protests in Germany, and last but not least, the xenophobic upheavals right here in Soweto last week. In all these cases, racism is the underlying issue. Racism, as defined in the broadest sense, includes all kinds of violence, discrimination, and prejudice based on social perceptions of biological, cultural, religious, or ethnic differences. According to the United Nations International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination, there is no distinction between the terms racial discrimination and ethnic discrimination. And superiority based on racial differentiation is scientifically false, deserving of moral condemnation, socially unjust and dangerous, and that there is no justification for racial discrimination in theory or in praxis anywhere. And I personally agree totally with this. Our discussion today will be fo focusing on the role of media and racism, and in particular on how the media in South Africa is covering the race debate. And there are many questions that immediately come to my mind when thinking about this aspect of racism. For example, is it a kind of reproduction of racism when the media all over the world, and in particular in Africa, broadly feature the terrible terrorist attack on the team of the satirical journal Charlie Hebdo, while at the same time more or less ignoring the terrorist attack in northern Nigeria, where a thousand people were brutally massacred? What does it tell us about the Western media if you only read something about Sub-Saharan Africa when it is related to war or natural disaster and recently to growth? Is the media sometimes scandalizing the issue of racism and in doing so fueling it instead of using their role to prevent racism through objective and critical reporting? And in the age of social media, with its media, immediate reaction times and its anonymity, is social media contributing to the rise of racism rather than opening a democratic debate on it? If you look at the people that are affected by racism, in most cases, the media is presenting them as, a vic as victims only. How much does this fuel the narrow discussion on victims and perpetrators and enhance the hate between the two groups they belong to? I just read an interesting article in the last edition of the weekly German investigative journal Der Spiegel. It was actually about a young Jewish man in Berlin who was attacked by a group of young men with an Arabic background. These young men were, by traveling at New Year's Eve with the metro and drinking beer, were loudly and frequently insulting Jews and Israel in general. Although the metro was jam-packed with travelers, only the young Jewish man stood up against them, shouting at them, I am Jewish, do you have a problem with that? And then he filmed the young Arabs with his smartphone. 
They wanted him to stop and to delete the film, and they attacked him. He was saved by his friends. The next day, newspapers in Israel reported sensationally on the incident, asking, is Berlin still safe for Jews? The young Jewish man, his name is Shapira, by the way, responded to this on his Facebook page by posting, I'm well, Berlin is still fantastic. Indeed, I would run naked through Berlin carrying only a Star of David. I would rather suggest you, Israel, come to terms with your own racism. And when afterwards, Pegida, the organizers of the protest against the Islamization of the West, where thousands of citizens have for weeks been protesting every Monday evening in several major German cities, some shouting racist defamation against Muslims, asylum seekers, and all kind of foreigners posted his story and misused it as another case against the Islamization, the allegedly Islamization of the West. In his immediate reaction, Shapira, the young Jewish boy or man, proclaimed that he would stand up against any kind of racism and that he doesn't allow the media or any organization to misappropriate him as a victim and a Muslim hater. Rather, his message is, stop the spiral of hate. Anti-Semitism should not be used to justify racism against Muslim people. That was his position. And I found his reaction quite amazing. In South Africa, when we are talking about racism due to the particular history of apartheid, we most of the time talk about racism between black and white skinned people. Whereas in the case of the riots, like last week in Soweto, everybody talks of xenophobia. But, but are not the underlying issues as well as mechanism the same? And what role is the media playing there in South Africa? Are they reproducing racism through scandalizing it or victimizing those who are affected? Or are they more sensitive and are contributing to prevent and abolish racism? With this last question, I would like to hand over to the moderator, Fazila Farouk. Thank all of you once again for coming, for your interest and your patience. And to you and your team, Fazila, thanks for organizing this debate. And thanks to my colleague, Camilla, who's always a big support, I guess. As usual, this debate will be recorded, and you will find extracts and the full discussion on our uh, both websites, Sexes and FAS.